Hello viewers, this is Scyther88, back with a new video. Today we will be talking about one of the most, if not the most, routine technique in molecular and cell biology, and that's cell culturing. This video will not be about how to culture cells, but instead tips and tricks that you won't find in the standard protocol. Research is all about following the proper protocol, correct? Well, I don't necessarily agree with that 100%. Sure, you should be using um, standard techniques, but science is about exploration. So this video will go over cell culturing methods that are not part of the standard. Because what is standard anyway? Is the standard something your technician or your PI told you? Um, or is the standard something you read in a paper? And why do we have so many variations of standard protocols? These are questions as scientists we should think about. Okay. So let's get on with the video itself. Mammalian cell culturing, debunking the standard. Okay, I want to go over the disclaimer first. And that's um, um, what I'm going to present, what, what, am I go what I'm going to present may not fit every situation. If you are hesitant about these techniques, um, test, them, test them out yourself and uh, see if they work. Okay. So, first question, do I need to add 10% fetal bovine serum into my cell culture media? Right, so this is, a, this is a very common percentage found in literature. If you go read any paper that involves cell culturing, chances are they're using DMEM or MEM with 10% uh, FBS. And the answer is actually uh, no. Lowering the percentage will slow down cell growth. So if you want your cells to grow more slowly, you can do so by adding media with lesser percentages of, uh, of, uh, of FBS. So 10% is what I usually stick with, but there is the option, option of going lower. And um, the point of what I'm trying to say is that it's not the end of the world if the concentration is not 10%. Of, cor of course, you can go higher than 10%, but I don't really think that's necessary. Okay, so then we have... Um, the second question is, do I need to add antibiotics in my cell culture media? Right. Penicillin and streptomy streptomycin, aka penstrep, is a very common commercial cocktail that labs use in their media to prevent cell contamination. And the answer, once again, is no. Just be careful when you're passing cells, and you should be just fine. I've been passing cells for many years now without any type of antibiotics. And I actually don't like um, using antibiotics because they might affect your experiment. I like to keep my cell cultures as pure as possible. And if you're careful, you sh if you're careful with your cell culturing, um, you will not get contamination. You do not need antibiotics. Let's move on to the third question. Third question: Do I need to warm up my cell culture media? Every lab has a 37 degrees Celsius water bath in their cell culture room. Culture room, You see this very commonly, um, and I'm sure they're warming up their bottles in that before they pass their cells. And um, do you need to warm up your media in the water bath? And you can probably guess it at this point, but the answer is no. Um, you can use the media straight from the 4 degrees Celsius refrigerator. I've tried this with many types of cells, and I haven't found a cell line that isn't that, I, and I haven't found a cell line that is affected by this yet. Also, this lowers the risks of contamination because who knows what's in that 37 degrees Celsius water bath? Is your lab or other labs um, are you keeping that completely sanitized at all times? You are risking contamination by putting your bottle in there in the first place. And then the last question is um, do I need to split my cells in a certain density, okay? So splitting cells is necessary to maintain continuous growth and to keep them healthy, to prevent cells from becoming overgrown. We know this. I'm sure your PI or technician told you to pass your cells every two or three days at a one to four or one in 10 ratio, or maybe leaving one mil of your cells after you resuspend them in media after trip sanitization. And for the last time, the answer is no. There is no set, um, there is no set um, ratio that you need to pass your cells in. Actually, you can um, 
remove uh, all your cells to, when you were passing your cells. What I mean, uh, what I mean is that, let's say you de you detach your cells with two mils of trypsin media in a T seventy five flask. Next, you resuspend you resuspend your cells with eight mils of media, bringing the total to ten mils. You can actually you can actually aspirate all the media with your pipette, just so remove all the media out, leaving only some bubbles and residual liquid. Add in fresh media, let's say 15 mils, and the cells will grow from the res res residual amount. Some people say you need certain densities for cells to grow, but I honestly have not found this to be true. This is very good for minimizing passages of our cells because you don't want to use cells that have been passed for too many times. Of course, the cells will grow much slower, but they won't stop growing. Alright, well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope these tips and tricks regarding cell culturing will help you and perhaps get you thinking about other routine protocols that you use. Remember, science is about explore, exploring the options. Okay, if you found this video to be useful, um, please like and uh, like this video and subscribe to me. This is Scyther88. Thank you everyone for watching. Signing off.